She's organized, productive, forward thinking. Hmm, very romantic of you. Welcome back to Dear Shandy, listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? I'm excited. Yes, we're vibrating with excitement yeah, over here. I'm, I'm blushing with excitement. I know. We, we kind of can't believe it. We feel yeah. like we've made it. Yes. If I'm that's honest. It. This is about us, really. <laughs> yes. The day you get Gary Turner and Teresa Nist on your podcast to talk about their golden relationship, I mean, we might as well just quit now. I mean, this is uh, these are A-list celebrities. They are. And they're really like... <laughs> Shh, you're not supposed to talk. Yeah, yeah. We haven't introduced Just you Just accept it. Accept it. <laughs> Today, we are joined, obviously. If you clicked on this, you know what's happening. We are talking to the golden bachelor himself and his gorgeous blushing bride, Teresa. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining us today. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you so much for having us. I, I have to tell you that I love you guys so much. Oh. When when the Golden Bachelor came out, I was saying, "Hey, is anybody talking about the show?" And I didn't know about podcasts, I didn't know about YouTube videos, and I found you guys, and I looked forward to it so much that I'd I'd be waiting and waiting for you to come. Oh. Oh. You're, you're so oh. really well, great, oh. <laughs> Teresa. Consider us buttered. We're, I'm dying. <laughs> Thank you. We could honestly. I am not just saying this. I have seen my husband cry. I think three times in the 10 years that we have been together. And one of those times was your diner date. This is true. Oh, so, man. Wow. Really? Yeah. That's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. He's not a crier. I'm working on it. I'm working on yeah. it. And, and we're not going to ask you any any gotcha questions, no. but I know the answer to this question. And I know it was over at the diner date. <laughs> so don't even, don't even give me a look. I know the answer. Okay. Let's wrap this up then. <laughs> All right. We're good to go. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining us today. We're going to have a lot of fun. Today is just like a gush fest. Love yeah. fests are just about your relationship and really your relationship dynamics. We just want to know what makes you tick, what didn't we see on TV, what makes you so perfect for each other. So thank you for sharing your relationship with us today. Sure. Yeah, thank you. That's a nice lead in too. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Just good. <laughs> so normally we start off a love fest by asking how you met. Obviously, everyone knows how you met. Even my dad knows how you met. You got my dad to watch The Bachelor. You don't even understand what a big deal that is. So instead, I want to ask you what your first impressions were of each other and feel free to be as specific as you can. I think the first impressions, of course, was her entrance to the show from the limo. Uh -huh. And um, so that first night, of course, was pretty grand. Um, and and her entrance with the um, bodysuit, the birthday suit, <laughs> was pretty spectacular. So my first impression was, okay, this girl has some moxie. She has some adventurous mm. uh, genes in her. Mm. And then, you know, shortly after that, we did the cupcake and the uh, happy birthday and so forth. And and it was a very sensitive uh, moment. So so I had a good first impression right off the bat of somebody that had some energy and some excitement and also some sensitivity. Mm hmm. So I, you know, I got into the limo and it was the first time that I met these women and I was in a limo with Ellen and with Edith. And as soon as I saw Edith, I said, oh, my God, she's spectacular. Why didn't I think of wearing a gold gown? What was I thinking? <laughs> and Ellen's sitting there going, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. And so I was calming Ellen down saying, you're going to do great. But when I saw what she had to do, I go, oh, no wonder she was nervous. But I didn't I wasn't thinking about what I had to say or do. And I got out of the limo and I just said, Teresa, don't trip. Just don't trip. <laughs> don't fall. And I get up there and I get next to Gary. And all of a sudden, I feel this intense attraction that I didn't expect to feel. I was just trying to get through the moment. And I go, oh, wow. Like, like something's happening here. Oh. And when I, like, I didn't want to do what I did. I <laughs> I'm the one who suggested it in the first place. But then when I knew what he was all about. I wanted to change it. I said, no, I don't want to do this anymore. We have the same story. This doesn't make sense anymore for me to do this. But, you know, I went through with it. And then I spontaneously kissed him, which is not like me. And later, yeah, later I said, 
you kissed me, but I kissed him. So <laughs> Yeah. Oh. And I mean, my kids gave me one piece of advice for that first night, which was don't kiss anybody. Uh. Right. And so she got number one and then there were three others. But um, <laughs> it, I screwed up right off the bat. You know, she no. got no. Right? Gary, get Gary you got kissed. And, yeah. You can't do anything about it. You were that. just yeah. receiving. You, you couldn't help it. Yeah. Lips I mean, were coming at you. Guy? OK, Teresa. So the birthday suit was your idea. But then at the last yeah. minute, you were like, never mind. Yeah, it, it was during the interview with the producers. Yeah. And they said, oh, so we're going to start filming on August 3rd. I said, well, August 4th is my birthday. And so the producer said, oh, well, then we can have you come out with a birthday cake. And I, in my head, I'm thinking this. I said, dare I say this? I said, or I could come out with my birthday, um, in my birthday suit. And they go, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't really hired yet. I don't know if you saw our, re- I mean, so our, you said that you did watch our recaps. Andy has beef with the fact that you were wearing yeah, dress. I wanted the full birthday. <laughs> I know. Suit. I remember you wanted me to be yeah. naked. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, he so felt that I. it was misleading. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel I was really duped, you know, yeah. like speaking of first impressions, Teresa, like uh, night one, it wasn't until the diner date that I saw yeah. it. I, I can admit it. I was thrown I off. I admit it too. I was thrown off by the cupcake. Yeah. Yeah. I thought um, it was too sensual for night one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We thought you went too far. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was, wow. I was. Yeah. I was like, it's going to be starting too strong. Mistake, like, yeah, I thought was it was able to overcome it. I thought it was throwing us off the scent. Yeah. OK, so can you describe each other using three adjectives? Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> the answer to your question is yes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to limit yourself to three. Oh, you want me to give you the three? I just wanted I just. Oh, you just wanted a yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, that was a bit of a dad joke. I'm going to say it. I know. I I'm, love a sucker, it. I'm a sucker for those. Uh, me too. I'm going to take every single yeah. one of those. Okay. She's organized, productive, forward thinking. Hmm. Very romantic of you. <laughs> I've, I've spent this week watching her work from home. So that's, that's what I've got. I'm saying that. You- so she has the job is what you're saying? <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> and that's how I am on the job. Very organized, productive, <laughs> and and actually, I was in charge. Let me do that too. Gary, we're going to save you and give you some more to you to work. Yeah, we're going to give you a second okay. shot at this. Um, she's very soft. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Mm. She's affectionate. What would be the third? Oh boy! <laughs> no, I want to be very accurate with mm-hmm. this. You know, the softness is is there. The affectionate is there. Um, I would say playful. Mm, Great. Love that. Oh, that is true. Yeah, we played pickleball in the house the other day. Yes. Because. Yeah, right here I, in the I kitchen. I think it's silly things to do. So Gary is generous, very outgoing, and loving. Oh, no. mm. you guys. Yay. How <laughs> would you two say that you compliment each other? We think alike. Yeah, we think so much alike. We, we, it, it's um, it's uncanny at times. Our our thought processes, you know, cause and effect, or or you know how logical we are. So there's few times when we have conflict over, you know, how to do things or where to go with things. And and the the problem is then when we do have conflict, we're both locked in at a certain spot that maybe is very close, but not identical. Uh-huh. And then we look at each other and go, oh, all right, what's going on here? What's going on? Yeah, oh we, we, that's the biggest surprise is that we are so much alike that we didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, oh, mm-hmm. wait, you feel you have learned that now in the real world, like being married. Yes. Is, yeah, yeah without you, a doubt. Sorry to put you on the spot. Can you think of an example? I'm just curious. Oh, the fact, oh, well, I'm extremely self-disciplined. He is too. We're very organized, very dogmatic. We're very outgoing. Um, We are very, you know, we're efficiency experts in the kitchen. (laughs) Well, just like when we were setting up for this Zoom call and I had everything set up on the, on the kitchen island here had everything set. I'm looking at the background. I'm looking at the cameras focus all right and everything. And I've been there for like 15 minutes or 20 minutes at four minutes till 
when I'm sitting there. She sits down and she goes, okay, we can log in. It's four minutes till. It's like, I'm kind of waiting for you. So what are you coming up here for? Oh my goodness. You're like racing to be earlier than the other. <laughs> we're both so prepared. Yeah. We're, mm-hmm. we're trying to make sure that there's yeah. no blips that we have problems with. Yeah. Uh, those are just good traits to have yeah. in general. Yeah. And when you have that in a relationship, so not one of you is like, trying to catch the other yeah well that's I, where a lot I, of i feel i'm catching myself feeling self-conscious because normally in a love fest <laughs> why because normally in a love fest we've like we've been to, we're like usually the old ones who've been together longer than our guests True. and i'm like i hear myself talking to these two about like yeah in a relationship this really works and i'm like shut well, up well, Charlie. you know what's so funny about that we were when we were watching the 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 men tell all i guess who yeah was, or I, I, yeah brayden so was brayden was so we just had brayden and and christina, christina on a love fest right before you actually and <laughs> um and i just remembered him giving you advice and i found it so funny and i love Bla- yeah. i love brayden yeah. i think he's fantastic he was like gary just he's just awesome. be yourself he's really but, awesome but yeah. I, he's great he's yeah. fantastic but i just thought it was so funny yeah yeah and i do i do feel good i and you know I have always been the oldest one in these love fests. So I appreciate you finally letting me <laughs> off the hook. I don't know. I so don't <laughs> can't believe we're this old, actually. <laughs> you, you know, you don't look it. You, you don't really look it. don't. And wow, it was, I got to tell you, watching you guys, I I wanted to resist gushing as much as I want, like as I genuinely want to. But your season, I wept so many times. You know, you just don't see this sort of love story like it's not shown you, you I, you're nodding you must have heard this so many times it's just really inspiring and when you say we feel young like yes like there's so much more life to live it's like this there's this idea that you reach a certain threshold and then suddenly like you just vanish it's just so frustrating and yeah. it was just really really deeply moving you know yeah. i just can't wait to like, see the that side that side of the franchise flourish Agreed. And and thank you so much for saying that. And it is a comment that we hear so many times. I, I don't think we can go anywhere for dinner or or out anywhere without hearing that same sentiment. Mm-hmm. It's like so nice to know that we connected with people that way, mm-hmm. that it, you can be open and, and there's so much good in life that you just have to be open to see. Yeah, yeah they probably to the forefront and thank god they did and they chose such incredible women but they were so great every single one of these women so lively so youthful so much life left to live and i think yeah it what we see a lot are so many young people tell us oh we loved your show and we go you watched it you're only like 23 (laughs) years old like why did you even think to and, yeah. Because because it was more real. Mm-hmm. People want to watch like what people want to watch reality TV to see car crashes. This is true, but they also want to watch reality TV to see real life. And mm-hmm. you guys were the realest yeah. thing we've ever seen mm-hmm. in our experience and, doing this whole thing. And we're kind of cynical, honestly. Yeah, very cynical. <laughs> And I didn't know, maybe this was fixed. I didn't know what was going on with this. We thought, as a matter of fact, they were casting so long for this. And I understand now why, because they cast extremely well, um, mm-hmm. that we thought it might be a joke. Mm-hmm. Like they kept saying for years, like we're casting mm-hmm. for senior bats or like, is this a joke or is this actually happening? But well, and the first contact I had with the producers was almost three years ago. Wow. 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 Yes. Nearly three years ago. And I had a couple of Zoom calls, a couple of conference calls, and then COVID went dark, you know, made everything go dark. It was literally then a gap clear until um, mid-February of last year when I got a call out of the blue saying, hey, are you still interested in being the Golden Bachelor? And of course, (laughs) then it was like, oh, I've noticed a name change. And where have you guys been for the last two years? Mm. Wow. And th- then it picked up again. Wow. So did you, before COVID, did they give you strong, like, were they like, you're going to be the Golden Bachelor? Or were they just like, you're one of several possibilities? I never really got an indication that way. They were only, uh, I mean, they were telling me, okay, we'd like for you to go to a, a couple of places nearby to get your hair cut. We'd like to see you get more tanned. We'd like to see you in... <laughs> activities, uh, you know, things like that. And so I was sort of doing this stuff and, you know, uh, crawling, you know, okay, let's <laughs> oh. see what happens. And then all of a sudden, you know, when I didn't hear anything, I had started to get excited. Right. And I, I 
you know, the reason I first got involved is my daughters got me going on it. I didn't really have a good circle of friends at the time. I wasn't dating anyone. So, you know, I got hyped up about it way back then. Mm. So. And so, but then you lost, you lost hope. You assumed it wasn't going to happen, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you kind of put it out of mind. Right. You know, you think, okay, the, the project's never going to happen or they've decided to go, you know, with someone else. They mm-hmm. found another group of people. We have a very cute video. We posted this a while back, but when they first announced you, we posted on our Instagram a reaction video of Andy seeing you for the first time. <laughs> And he called you a stud. I mean, I stand by it. You're a stud. What, what, you are a stud. You, how, what is he it it can't be helped. Stud? Okay. Okay. Anyway, okay. Back to relationship. Enough, enough about this. No more buttering. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We that. have to get back to business yeah. here. <laughs> Earth breeze in your hamper is the thing that you want there. <laughs> Isn't it time to show the planet you care? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. It is time to show the planet you care because with Earth breeze. Look at these eco sheets. It's so tiny, so light. There's no liquid here. So can we talk about the difference it'll cost to ship this around the country? Also, the difference in weight in your hamper, like you saying. When we do laundry, I just throw this into the side. We have a side pocket on our hamper and it adds no extra weight. It's so easy to tote around. And also, if I find the load of laundry is actually bigger than I thought, I can just tear off an extra bit of detergent. I'm not like, oh, crap. I didn't bring enough detergents. I didn't bring enough pods. Those pods, by the way, those also come in big plastic jugs. That's not good for the environment. And about those plastic jugs. Yes. Do you know how many of those jugs, those big ass jugs? Yeah. Do you know how many of those end up in landfill? Over 90%. Landfill. I know. 700 million of them. Picture that. That's as far as the eye can see. The system is broken because, frankly, we are being advertised that those are recyclable, that they will get recycled. And they most often are not. Even if you think that you're recycling properly, over 90% of those do not get recycled. That's super messed up. It's deceptive. You know, people buy those thinking that they can just recycle them at the end. And they're doing what they can. And that's why I love the difference Earth Breeze makes. And by the way, in case you're looking at this little sheet, I mean, it's a flimsy little sheet. You might think, that's not cleaning my clothes. Let me tell you, they really work just as well as any detergent I've ever tried. They are fragrance-free. They are good for sensitive skin. I even use them sometimes with some of my more delicates. They work with like towels. They work with everything. And you don't get any rashes on your skin. I don't. I don't have any rashes anymore. It's true. I'm going to ask you a question. All of Earth Breeze's great things aside. Uh-huh. If you went to the grocery store to do an errand, would you rather buy a thing that was heavy or a thing that was Ugh. light if it did the same thing? There you go. If it did the same thing. You know what you are if you choose a heavy bottle of laundry detergent over Earth Breeze? Set in your ways. I was just going to say a dick. <laughs> A dick who's set in their ways. So right now, our Shandies can save 40% off Earth Breeze by going to earthbreeze.com slash Shandy. That's earthbreeze.com slash Shandy to cut out single-use plastic from your laundry room and get 40% off your subscription. Earthbreeze.com slash Shandy. What are your love languages? Oh, I know it. Mine is words of affirmation and physical touch. Well, if you can get two. Yeah. (laughs) Does Gary deliver on those? (laughs) Shut up. <laughs> and you said he was a stud. Oh, honey, you are so pretty. Yes, I do. I mean, you see, you're like the Michael Jordan of words of affirmation. No one yeah, beats you. Is. Thank you. I want, he's, I want words of affirmation. I want to have a hotline to you to give me words of affirmation as a man. <laughs> I carry around a thesaurus. A yes. Synonyms and, and are a dying art. My um, love language is... Um, is really touch, I think. Mm. Uh, Without a doubt. More than anything. Below yeah, the waist was... or above the waist? <laughs> Andy? <laughs> Sorry. Well, Andy, stop. Either, oh, I don't know. It's important. It Wait. depends on time of day. Okay, after, got it. After dark. All right, Andy, all right. don't be so inappropriate with I, our lovely I need guests. to know. Was touch is a, oh, such a touch happen? No, touch is always nice. Okay. Well, well it's it's sometimes good. nicer. Depends on <laughs> where, you know. Gary does like a lot of hugs. I do. A okay. lot of hugs. I really a do. Lot of hugs. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So now on to the harder questions. What was um, an early hurdle in your relationship and how did you overcome uh-huh. it? There's, well, there is a hurdle right now. There's I, a hurdle. I do. I still work. So that's oh. the hurdle. Oh. And so, yes, when when I went on the show, I'm a very, very loyal person. And I had no idea what lay in store for me that I would be on the show for so long. 
I said, I'll be back in two weeks. I honestly thought, oh, let me just get it, get through the first night. And I stayed and I stayed and I stayed. And my employer was so good to me. And before I left, I kind of said, don't worry, I'm not going to leave you. So kind of <laughs> stuck with me, even though my intent, I'm never going to, I'm not going to work until I'm 80. I am still working. So it, right now it's a long distance relationship, essentially. Uh, yeah. Oh. So until we decide on a place to really live, then I can really make, you know, a big decision to say, okay, we're going to live in this place or, or that place. And originally it was South Carolina. We're still not sure if that's what it is. How do you feel about that, Gary? Um, you know, I go through phases. Um, I guess the, the difficult part is I went on to the show to find my partner. Mm -hmm. And I've been retired for a long time. I wanted fun, adventure. I wanted to go and do. So that is the, you know, that is the crux of it right now is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when does that start? Mm -hmm. um, right. I, I think the living arrangement is really secondary to the freedom of of being able mm -hmm. to go and enjoy life and, and do. And, you know, this is Teresa's first week in Indiana at mm -hmm. my house. Mm -hmm. And um, so we had the good fortune last night. I, I got my closest friends together and um, went to the nearby bar and grill and had a great night. And then this morning, I see those same friends playing pickleball. Mm -hmm. And they're all raving. It's like, oh, Teresa was so nice. And, you know, did is she enjoying her time here in Indiana? And, uh, you know, all positive comments. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. that that hurdle is is still there. And, and right now we're dealing with it. It's just something we're going to have to find the way around. Mm. Although coming up, we're about to be doing a lot of things together. So we'll be going away with his friends. We'll be going to Italy. So there's a, a lot. And then I'll be coming back here. So a lot will happen. Oh, yep. the Italy trip, the yeah, famous the Italy, Italy trip, trip yeah. where you were uh -huh. going to learn Italian. Yeah. I sound I sound stalkerish right now. <laughs> we're reminiscing about your suit. You know what I really appreciate about that hurdle, I got to tell you, is it really it really is a, a timeless hurdle. So the other side of this podcast is we give relationship advice. People write in the relationship questions and then we sit in the living room over here and answer them and people write in anonymously and we just tell them what wow. we think they should do. And distance is a big one. It comes yeah. up so often. And in my personal opinion, I think men have a harder time with it than women do. Yeah. If they're in it. Um, okay. I don't know. You, yeah. you can disagree yeah. with me if you think I'm wrong. No, I, I agree with you. I, mm -hmm. I agree. Completely. You know, as a, as a corollary to that, hurdle our cultures that we are comfortable in are so different too mm -hmm. i mean teresa lives in a really population dense area she walks to any shop and and it's all very close and there there's so many people i could turn the camera around and show you the lake and and there's 500 houses on this lake but when you go any direction there's nothing but cornfields mm -hmm. and I have to drive 25 minutes for a grocery store. Um, so there's just a lot of cultural differences mm. as well as distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they kept saying, do you like it? Do you really like it? We know that it's different from New Jersey, but do you really like it? Yes, I like it. It's great. It's beautiful. So so, so that's not a hurdle, the cultural difference. No, it's more. It's just the distance and the job. It, it It's not a hurdle, but it also adds into figuring things out. Mm -hmm. if, if we were both Midwesterners or if we were both East Coast people, oh. I, mm -hmm. I think it would it, it would be easier. Yeah. I mean, it's a good sign that he wants you to stop working. Oh, it's a great sign. You're right. It yeah. is. So it's what's going to what's it going to take to get what's you to stop working? We are. I think that we need to go look at seriously look at places to live because mm -hmm. I also not just work. I have to unravel my home. He has sure. to unravel his home. Sure. We both have to sell homes and we have to go to a new home. So it's a lot. It's and that's the difference when you're really old, too. Mm -hmm. um, he's near his children and grandchildren. I'm near my daughter and grandsons there. I do have a grandson. I'm sorry, a son in South Carolina with three grandsons there. Um, the, so it's 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 a lot to unpack yeah. and to change. It's not like you're carefree and you can just go. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, so true. we're going to so work true. through this. This is going to work. 
Um, we just have to figure it out. You know, that's just such a relatable hurdle. It's a solid hurdle. It yeah. takes a lot, you know, moving. It's a big yeah. deal. I mean, moving at 25, who cares? Okay, thank yeah. you for sharing such yeah, a great hurdle. You. That was good. Okay, we so didn't mean to. A plus hurdle. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> it's now time for Andy's favorite question. Yes. So I want to know how you guys fight, your fighting style, how you resolve conflict, and who says sorry first on average. Okay. Ooh. We yell and scream and then say sorry, and then we're better for it. <laughs> I would say that. Yeah. That's it, it's more like intellectual jousting to start mm-hmm. with. Mm-hmm. A, a point, and counterpoint, and then it'll accelerate a little bit. And, it, you know, we start looking at each other like, really? Really? I'm totally right. And then she'll say, no, I'm totally right. And then we go, mm-hmm. yeah, it doesn't matter. Nice. And, and as far as the um, I'm sorry's, I think Teresa's is a little better at that than I am. You know, she's mm. she's pretty good at knowing when it's OK. This is an important and uh, right. just. Yeah. Sorry. Let's move on. Intellectual jousting. My like goodness. That. Who uses the word jousting? Yeah, Gary, anymore? you are not disappointing. I, mean, thanks. I want to take it back. I don't scream. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I can't even get above this volume. It, yeah. It's modified <laughs> screaming. Yeah. OK, mm. so no screaming, just jousting. Cool. I feel like I, I've seen couples do that. The intellectual yeah. jousting. It's almost like I, I'm going to outsmart you or like I ha- listen to my reasons. <laughs> yeah, But I think it's a good point you make. Both of us need to forget about being right. Right. Mm-hmm. Or, or proving our own point and, mm-hmm. and finding a compromise area. Mm-hmm. And right. ironically, you know, after I retired, my second career was as a mediator. So I did small claims court and divorce and I did workplace mediation and all that. Wow. Sometimes that training is counterproductive with a partner, with a spouse, because Mm. you're you try to be detached and you try to be unemotional. Mm. And I'm not. I'm I'm very Mm. much the emotional guy. Right. Right. I I have a little internal conflict there. That's fascinating. Would you say you're more emotional than Teresa is? Mm. I don't know about that, but I mean, you watch the show. Which one of us cried the most? Oh, I cried. <laughs> you know, it was like, Wait, do you uh, actually want us to answer that question? Should we answer it? For what we think? No, because I'm embarrassed by asking it. So <laughs> <laughs> You never should be. I love it when men cry. It's yeah, the best. It is good. I like crying. Uh, I don't, I don't cry do enough. More. Crying feels <laughs> amazing. That. That's great. Doesn't a good cry, it feels incredible. It's kind of in the sex department. I, I mean, to me it is. Yeah. A good cry. It's when a release. You, it's, when, a, it's a fluid um, release. Yeah, when you... Re- <laughs> fluid release. I mean, no, that... <laughs> That I mean, went over the it, line. Oh, Andy, that was just just all right. a touch over the line. All right. And what does ABC think? No? Pretend you're talking okay, to we're good. your parents here. <laughs> you tried to slip that one you're in. You're not there. old enough to be my parents. <laughs> oh, yes, we are. Barely. Next question. Your relationship is obviously a public one. I mean, I cannot think of a more public relationship than yours. Yeah. I'm sure that comes with wonderful aspects like you know, people stopping you when you go out to eat, telling you how you've impacted them. But I'm sure there's a dark side. What do you think is the most common misconception about your relationship? Ooh, the most common misconception. I think that it's a misconception people have that we are together all the time. Mm-hmm. I, in general, people believe that we left January 4th and rode off to some house that magically appeared somewhere halfway between Shrewsbury and Hudson, Indiana, and and we're living there every day. That's it. Right. Oh. Interesting. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they the should hurdle, have. Yeah. I feel like ABC should have hooked you up with a house exactly equidistant between the two. Yeah. Hey, ABC, <laughs> get out of my house. Don't tell them. That is, <laughs> That's a great idea. Drop a hint. I agree with that. Yeah. Can you leave the house without, uh, can you ever go anywhere and see people and not have someone stop you? No. 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 Uh, Amazing. But, wow. But I think both of us, we like it. I genuinely love it because I feel mm-hmm. like then anyone that wants to be involved in the journey gets to be involved. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, they want to take a picture. They want to tell you a little bit about their life story. And it's like, that's so awesome that people get excited about it and they want to be in on the story. But yes. also we get to meet new people all yeah. the time. Yeah. 
It's so great. Uh, yeah. And they tell us their story. So, that's the right reaction. <laughs> it is the right. Could you imagine if you guys were dicks? You're like, no, get away. I mean, some people <laughs> get like that. I can honestly say that I have not turned down a single person for a picture since the very beginning of the journey. Since that's I right. first began being uh, recognized. That's and right. I just, I love it. Yeah. Embrace it. They all love you. I mean, no, yeah. one, I don't think anyone, you know, a lot of people like take a picture with a celebrity just to have the picture with a celebrity. Yeah. I think they want, they like want to be a part of this. Yeah. It's really yeah. beautiful. It is. Do your cheeks hurt on a daily basis from smiling at people? <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so, so to smile all the time. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason that occurred to me because when I, when I smile a lot, my cheeks hurt and I'm That's like, yeah. it's such a specific yeah. muscle. Yeah. Like it's a good yeah. muscle to hurt, but you I mean, know, all the pains you could have, it's, it's oh, probably in the top five. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So normally our question here is any beliefs about relationships that have changed since you found each other, but I wanted to alter it for you, for you too, because I feel like it's, I wanted to make it more general, like any beliefs in general that have been changed by this experience, or you could also answer the first one. Well, that you don't have to know each other that long. To know that there is something and there's a connection and that it works, that you know, that it would have taken a lot longer than this to get to the point that we're at, that I don't even I can't even believe that this process worked and we did it. Yeah. I did, yeah. You know, that. Yes, I, I I didn't go into this expecting that this is what was going to happen. Yeah, you only and, asked for yeah. two weeks off. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> 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 I'm not that good. <laughs> Gary, how about you? I had a belief that um, at an older age, that falling into a relationship like this would be easier. Mm. Now, some of the some of the things are easier. You don't worry about a career as much. You don't worry about children. You don't worry about some of that life planning. But you still have to put in the work. Mm -hmm. You still have to honor the other person. You still have to find their their love language. You still have to do all the work to build a relationship. And in a way, with us, that was made a little more difficult because we got married and then we started the process of of knowing each other, mm. which is yeah. backwards of what 99.9% <laughs> mm. of the people in the world do. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and it's been good, but it's not a cakewalk. I mean, we really yeah. have to actively work to get to know each other and mm -hmm. and be pleasing to each other. Mm hmm. Well, right. I mean, the long distance too. I mean, that hurdle yeah. is major. It means you have to yeah. be so intentional with getting to know each other. Yeah. I really appreciate that, that yeah. honest answer. I will admit I had that idea when I, when I watched the show, I had mm -hmm. the idea where, where it's like, oh, well, they were each married for over 40 years. It's like, they have mm -hmm. that down pat. It's almost like, <laughs> you know, you're just be like that one. And then it, it's automatically good. You know right. what I mean? And even though yeah. it's a, so true. a so new true. autonomous human. And then the fact that you can say that in front of Teresa means. Yes. The good. fact that you can say that in front that of each other. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I thought it was a cakewalk. I don't know what you're talking about. You're welcome. <laughs> Last Thank question, you. and then we're going to get to the game. Okay. What is your number one piece of love advice for anyone out there feeling disillusioned? I have one. Okay. So if there are issues in your relationship, don't go to other people about it. Oh. Don't talk to anybody else about it. Talk to each other about it. Because mm. then you get this opinion and that opinion and this opinion, and then it mushrooms out of control. And then people think that they should side with you and say how bad it is. And it's mm. not. You yes. should just go to each other. This is very, is we've, we've been through this. Advice. And especially yeah. single friends. Yes. Single friends are the yeah. worst people to ask mm. relationship advice about. I'm also going to yeah. steal mushroom as a verb. Mushroom? Yeah, okay. she says it mushrooms oh, out yeah. of control. That. I love that. <laughs> okay, Gary, how about you? So I think it's that sometimes people listen too much with their ears and they need to watch mm. body language and facial expression when they're talking back and forth. And I think men especially, you know, when you ask your wife something, it's like, is something wrong? And they go, no, <laughs> you're not so dumb as to realize there's something wrong. It's when it gets more subtle than that. Mm. So really pay attention and be a really, really good listener. Mm. I, I love that answer. And I think that you really 
showed that both of you did yeah. on the season. It was just so it was very healing yeah, to watch. It really was. It was it was watching it was almost like communication porn watching you guys. <laughs> Oh, can I use that somewhere later? Yes, yes. I really like that. <laughs> okay, you as long too. as we can use intellectual jousting. Yeah, yeah, yes, and mushrooming. So, Charlene, Andy, yesterday, I left the house. I walked three long city blocks. Okay. I went down the stairs of the subway. Yes. Went to the platform. Was waiting for the subway. And guess what? I forgot to do. I forgot to drink my AG one. And guess what? I did. No, you turned around. I came home. Wow. That is dedication. Did you really do this? Yes. Wow. I won't start my day without AG1 because I know there are a lot of things I've done. I've done a lot of supplements, this and that. Oh, I got to tell you guys, Andy's not exaggerating. I mean, so I, there have been times where I'm like, I think we need to have an intervention. No, it's Your true. supplement situation. You're just really on I've top of this stuff. I've tried every supplement. Yes. And I'm telling you right now, yes. I am never stopping AG1 until the day I never die because I'm taking AG1. <laughs> What I'm kind of cut up on is the fact that you forgot to take AG1 in the first place. It was a very hectic morning. Okay. Lots going on. All right. I forgive you. Because I never forget my AG1 in the oh. morning. Yes, I'm so oh, superior. Wow. Because AG1 is expertly formulated with vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics and whole food sourced ingredients so that you have comprehensive daily nutrition first thing in the morning. And you get to clean out your cupboard. No one likes to go, you know, when you have a guest over, do you think a guest wants to open a cupboard and see an entire wall of pills? Yeah, well, I'm, Just judging, I'm judging the person that does that in the first place. But yes, but we we're that it. person. <laughs> I'm that person until now. No, I'm saying I judge the person that would ever go to someone else's house and open a cupboard and judge them for what they have. In but their you house. don't really know a person until you open their cupboard. <laughs> So are you confessing to being one of those people? Oh, I'm one of those people. I'm a cupboard opener. <laughs> so if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, plus five free travel packs with your first purchase when you go to drinkag1.com slash dearshandy. That's drinkag1.com slash dearshandy. All right. <laughs> it is now time for the Dear Shandy Newlyweds game. Yay! I'm so screwed up. You two were very studious yes. in your answer mm -hmm. writing. My goodness. No cheating at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was it was very quiet. Mm -hmm. And they went like, yep. to answer. <laughs> I, I, didn't feel like, I feel like Teresa was a grade A student. Yeah. She was very like. <laughs> it was very we'll cute. see, I guess. And actually, we got a fun tidbit. We didn't end up using this question. But in the discussion, we learned what each of their first ever jobs were. And I wanted to remember to bring it up because I just loved the answers. Mm -hmm. So let's hear it. Gary, what was your first ever job? My first ever job was at McDonald's. And I, I was in charge of making the milkshakes. But <laughs> back then, there was an actual milkshake machine. And I told you, don't use that gesture. <laughs> I love that he did it again. Thanks for doing it more vigorously <laughs> more, this time. Yeah. <laughs> and Teresa, how about you? I was a sales associate at Park Lane Hosiery. Amazing. Oh, Just wow. amazing. Okay. So we'll start with Teresa. But I have to, I have to. Uh, oh, make a Andy likes to predict yeah. what happens. And he actually has a pretty oh. good success rate. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go for a 2 2 tie with an overtime. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think Ther you're right. Teresa's going to take it in overtime. Oh, my yeah. goodness. All right. Let's see. Sorry, wow. Gary. <laughs> okay. Teresa, you're going first, which means, Gary, this is your point to win or lose. Okay. Teresa, if you could only listen to one musician, band, or composer for the rest of your life, who would it be? And show the camera your answer when you say it. Van Morrison. Very nice. Okay. Very nice. Andy, Andy really I'm respects that answer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Gary, did you get My that? My answer, well, I remembered the van. Oh, you did. Oh, <laughs> no. But it was Luther Vandross. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think uh, I get a half a point. You get a third of a point, actually. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and Luther Vandross, Van Morrison. I don't think I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's gonna fly. Yeah, but, uh, I like Luther Vandross. Though, too. I mean, that's that's some <laughs> very good <laughs> sex music. Luther, yeah, Vandross. very good sex music. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, Gary, how about you? You can only listen to one musician, band, or composer for the rest of your life. Who is it? It's oh, Pitbull. No, Pitbull. no, that's not true. That said, that's not. I true. said Pink because he has mentioned Pink. That would have been. Yeah, 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 I know. 
This is this is the most shocking revelation of the Golden Bachelor by far. I feel like you see him differently I now. I see. It is, I can never unsee this. <laughs> you didn't see when he released his music for the, the wedding? It was thinking <laughs> Pitbull. It's yeah. true. Oh, it's Amazing. true. Oh, but you, but then I, you took over. I have to tell you, I don't know if you know this, my day job is I sing opera, and I loved that yeah, you walked okay. down the aisle to the flower duet. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, thank you so much. Was, I listened to... 100 different pieces to get that so oh, thank you it's a thank classic you. it's a, in very good taste i was like "Ooh, thank you so much yeah, very nice <laughs> so question number two teresa yes. what is your biggest peeve and the both of you agreed that it would be a peeve about the world at large not mm-hmm. necessarily about each other let's see what you wrote mine is very complicated so you won't be able to read this this is when I'm at the grocery store checkout line and I start bagging and I'm just thinking, well, I'll start bagging, but let's do this together. But they just abandon me to my own devices. And then the next person's coming on the line and pushing me through. And I just figured, let me start and you help me. But they just li- leave me to my wow. own Wow, this and is I a pull- v- yeah. very specific peer. Oh my <laughs> goodness. I, I kind of feel her because, yeah. you know, I mean, I know what, what you were doing, because really you we're trying to assist the person who's there to assist right. you, but by assisting yeah. them, you made it seem like you didn't want assistance. Right. And so it backfired. Yeah. Oh. So that, thank you for understanding. Oh, so now wow. I say, Hey, let's do this together. Let's do it together. So I'm just all about let's, you know, try to cooperate and we get out of here faster. So, Gary, that was mine. I'm, I have a feeling Gary didn't get this. Gary's face looks like a question mark right now. I, I'm, I'm as shocked as you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what you wrote, Gary. Because my answer was poor listening. Uh, I mean, that's, oh, that's a more poor listening. relatable. Yeah. yeah. No? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Teresa, I have to call yeah. it a bluff here. I yeah, mean, yeah. I feel like poor listening would bother you more than this begging at the grocery store situation. Yeah. Okay. That was good. That was really good. <laughs> that was really good. Oh, okay. And that's it. Game. My number one from now on. That's my pet peeve. <laughs> Gary, what is your biggest pet peeve? My biggest pet peeve is slow drivers. Oh. oh well, I mean, in the passing lane going 70 yeah. or less. That's my area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Did she get that? People he- slow in the fast lane. Oh, wow. very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. <laughs> we got one wrong par for the two. Fantastic. Okay, we have a point. Great. Very exciting. <laughs> You're on the board. Question <laughs> number three, Teresa. Okay. When you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? An actor. <laughs> An actor. Wait a minute. And you, um, yeah. I did it gender correct. Actress. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, you're showing your age, Gary. It's actually reversed now. It's gender incorrect. Yes, I got it right. <laughs> he got, I mean, he gets he the got, point. Yeah, gets yeah the we point. have to yeah, celebrate absolutely. the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wait. So, ooh, one, one. This is exciting. Yeah, this is getting no. tight. Okay, tight. Gary, when you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh. An attorney. Huh? An attorney. That's a what? good one. Can I ask you a question? Which movie yeah. did you see that made you want to be an attorney? Well, I don't think there was a movie or Oh, or you just anything. want I, I you just Yeah, I love the law, the precision of the law. When you were a kid? And always, yeah. I mean, I was well, I loved to debate my parents when I was little and I thought that was oh. a good stepping stone. I I really don't know where it came from, but I when I was little and all the way through uh, school, I wanted to be an attorney. Did one of your parents or someone say, you should be an attorney, Gary? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So don't. <laughs> Never too late. You should do it now. So oh. I was wrong. Let's see. Really wrong. A race yeah. car driver. Oh, oh, I mean, that does that does add up. Mm-hmm. How you love cars so much. Uh, it's true. I mean, and the fast lane. Yeah. It's 1-1 one, one right now. Yeah. It's getting exciting. Ooh. Teresa. I got some good answers coming up. Oh, <laughs> you, got, you, got a point, you got a point in the bank, yeah. Teresa, question number four. What is your bucket list travel destination? This is not going to be very exotic, but... Newark, Spain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> she puts Spain. Okay. I think Spain. that's that's a good answer. And and I thought it was Italy. Oh, okay, but that's oh. that's all you talked about. Oh. <laughs> that's good. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> okay, so Gary, how about you? What is your bucket list travel destination? Iceland. Ooh, I like that one. Oh. That's also kind of mine now. Yeah, that I that's becoming yours yeah. for sure. Teresa, did you get that? I put two things, but the first thing I put was. Okay. Okay. She put Iceland and Northern Lights. Oh, that's that's the same thing. Yeah. Can you yeah. see the Northern Lights yeah. in Iceland? Good answer. Good answer. Oh, <laughs> done. Okay. That's a point. Yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. It's a point. point. Okay. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Teresa mm-hmm. is pulling ahead right now. Oh. Mm-hmm. Question number five. This is it, Teresa. You gotta get this, Gary. <laughs> For me. <laughs> He wins this point. <laughs> it's your last meal on earth. What do you order? This is a no-brainer for anyone who knows me. Salad. <laughs> oh my god. It's me. Yeah. Salad. He got salad. Woo. Very nice. Yeah. Wait. Okay, Teresa, well, I, I mean, that says very broad. Okay, but what kind of salad? Yeah, what salad? No, yeah, we're not- a specific salad. Okay, let's hear it. Oh, it is dark leafy green vegetables, red onion, tomato. Spinach. Spin- well, that's the spinach, the dark, okay. dark leafy. Mm. Um, miniature cucumbers, chickpeas, avocado, roasted turkey or roasted chicken breast. And olive oil, olive oil, and oregano, and sea salt, and um, balsamic, balsamic vinegar. vinegar. And I love oh. it so much. Right. Oh, I mean, it sounds delightful. There's tons of of nuts in it too, like sunflower seeds and walnuts and almonds. Yeah. I mean, that sounds sense. delicious, but I, I, it's your last meal on earth. Oh, what am I great? Really, tiramisu. That was it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, he got that point. Yeah. So now this this is it. If Teresa gets this, she wins. And if she doesn't, then Andy, you were right, oh. and it's a two two tiebreaker. Okay. Wow. Let's okay. see. Gary, it's your last meal on earth. What do you order? I order meatloaf. Okay. All right. Let's see. Oh. oh! I knew it. <laughs> she totally fooled me with that frown. That I works. I know, trying to throw you off. That's <laughs> wow, you didn't even oh, need no. to go to overtime. No overtime. All right, Just Teresa. Three, beautiful. You are the winner of the Dear Shandy Newlyweds game. Woo! Congratulations. <laughs> Okay, Andy, you were close with your prediction. I mean, it just didn't go over time. My goodness, you two. You were such delight. We're so excited that you joined us. Thanks. Thank you for sharing your your relationship with us and for following along with our recaps. We we, sometimes recapping can feel like work. It was not work for one second with your I was eager. I was like, when are we going to recap again? When are we going to do it again? You were so insightful. I just, I couldn't believe the things that you were saying that you were so right about. So Uh. good. We were and very yeah, touched. We were most, very touched. No, really, it was the most thoughtful review of, of The Golden Bachelor. And I've got to get you to listen to it. One day we'll go through it. When we came back um, and we were together in New Jersey, we watched The Golden Bachelor. We started watching it together, which was really a really interesting experience. Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, was I fun. could imagine. Yeah. To get it from oh, his perspective. That yeah. is so unique. Like yeah. how many people that get to do be. that? What an amazing yeah. experience. <laughs> That's just yeah. wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, just thank enjoy you guys. We and really appreciate it. Good luck with the hurdle. I I love the juicy relatable hurdle, yeah. and we will be following along. We are rooting and for you. Rooting for you. Thank for you. Sure. We didn't mean to be this yes. honest, but thank, thank you. you so much. No, we oh. love honesty. Thank you so much. We will set you free. Enjoy yeah. your Friday evening. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're thank you have so a good great weekend. Great thank to meet you. Have guys. a great night, guys. Great Bye. to meet you. Yep. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Oh, Oof. oh man, my cheeks hurt. My cheeks hurt too. They hurt from smiling they so hurt. much. They were so cute. Oh, and that was one of those ones where I we could have just kept going. Yeah, I mean, we have to let them go. I know. We can't just take uh, them all day. Just and want- they only, we took like one percent of their time together this week. <laughs> it's like literally just dear Shandy. Yeah, I. Speaking of which. I really respected that hurdle. You know, long distance is a thing. Like, it's a sacrifice to be like, okay, I'm going to relocate for this relationship. And that's not to say I don't think a relationship or the right relationship is worth it. But when you're established somewhere, you've got a career, you've got family, 
you know, sometimes that's that's the thing that's that, that does yeah. a relationship in. So I mean, they're everything they do is stepped up one notch in reality. Mm -hmm. it's like all the things are real. Yeah, and it's and it's refreshing. I mean, this is real life. Yeah, great vocabularies too. Oh. <laughs> I don't think I heard a like. I was the one saying like. Oh, I was. I caught myself saying like, yeah. and I was like ashamed. <laughs> yeah, I sound like a teenager. Oh youngster. my goodness, they were so sweet. Yeah, I really, I felt honored. Oh, to me meet too. Them. Well, you know, it takes a lot for me to get starstruck. It's not oh. really my thing. I'm not really like a celebrity person, but I was. I was starstruck at the beginning because there were some issues like getting the Zoom going. I was and, worried, and we were just like joking around. I was like, I'm, I'm joking around with Gary and Teresa. I know. <laughs> It's not even real. Yeah. Gary. Gary. Talking to us. Gary. And Teresa. Teresa watched our recap. Watching our recap. In fact, when we had the cameras off because they were writing their answers, she mentioned that she was afraid to like our recaps and our posts because she was worried that we would see. Oh, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> Can we also talk about Gary's answer to the beliefs that have changed after this experience? And he was like, you know, that a relationship is still... It takes effort. You yeah. know, you have this idea that you're just going to like waltz in and it's going to be easy. Right, right. And I I really admire the honesty and that he could say that in front of her. You know, I when you can have that kind of honesty in front of each other, which yeah. is, you know, they're admitting that there are challenges to it. It to me, this the sign that that's something that can be so openly discussed is a really good sign. Right. He said the way he said it, like they're working backwards from marriage. Yes. I mean, this is honesty. And these are two people who know a thing or two about marriage. Right. And they have a lot of roots and they have a lot of logistics to deal with. Yes. There's a lot here. It's yeah. not just, you know, two teenagers running off together. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's refreshing. Ugh. And can we talk about the public interest? Yes. Everyone loves this story. Yes. The world loves it. I've got people who never, first of all, they never watch any reality mm -hmm. TV or even TV. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what do you think about that, that Golden Bachelor? Yeah, yeah, I that? mean, I, I mentioned at the top that my dad got watching. Yeah. That's a really big deal. Like my dad struggled to even watch my season. Mm -hmm. Like I was on the no, show and he didn't even watch. <laughs> <laughs> so that tells you something. Yeah. But he was fully invested, like really looking forward to it and watching our recaps, like really into it. I think the two of them, it was like a cultural zeitgeist moment, really. Yeah, I agree. It was, it was, you know who loves them more than anybody? ABC. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're like, cha-ching. <laughs> yeah. Jackpot. Yeah. I mean, Golden Bachelorette. We'll be watching. Yeah, it's coming. And recapping. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that is a wrap yeah. for What a Beautiful Love lovely. Fest. Yes. It's lovely. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Leave us Apple and Spotify. Podcast ratings and reviews. Tell your friends and generally do all the things you would do to support a podcast you enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye. <laughs>